Hi, my name is Nilesh Vass and I'm the founder of Adroid Surgical. And today we're going to discuss the teeth. So this is something that we get asked about all the time with our V-Scope device and how we can manage to sort of secure the airway while using the teeth as a fulcrum. So let's go back a little bit and, and let's talk about the differences between what we sort of use to secure the airway versus how anesthesia use the Macintosh blade. So, um, I, forgive me, we've got the camera on the left side of this mannequin head, but when we use a uh, laryngoscope, uh, such as a Macintosh, you're using it uh, mainly up through the right side of the mouth. And as you can tell, it's quite a high profile and it's metal. And anesthesia teach everybody to sort of go in this direction. Why? Well, you want to pull that sort of push that tongue away upwards and away from you so you can get the tip of the blade uh, into the follicular usually and hopefully um, visualize the larynx so you can pass an endotracheal tube through the right side. It's got a large channel here where you can pass a very big tube. There you go. So let's put that in and let's see, this is a mannequin that does not have the tongue inflated, uh, doesn't have a, a collar on it. Yes, I, I, can, I can do it. It's very high profile, so I'm pushing really hard, and you can probably see me sort of struggling a little bit. But I can see the airway, and, and we can pass a endotracheal tube between the vocal cords. But the thing is this, um, if this was a tougher patient, and say they had um, uh, a little bit of trismus, or they had a short chin, then I might be struggling. And what happens usually when people struggle is they put a lot more force and inadvertently they might use the teeth as a fulcrum anyway. And it's not a consistent pressure, it's inconsistent. I'm going to change my hands here. And you'll probably see that they go like this and it moves from side to side. And metal against teeth is never good, especially when it has a sharp angle, and you'll start chipping teeth. I would contend that this profile here, which is so high, and the metal construction is the number one reason why there's a lot of dental injuries when intubating, which is completely different from how we intubate using the V-scope or the anterior commissure scope. So this is the predicate device for our V-scope, which has been around for over a century. And we use this to this day to examine and gain access to the airway. And the one thing that we always tell everyone is that when we use this device, um, we don't just rest metal against the teeth. There's a tooth guard, a, a rubber tooth guard that protects the teeth. And for our V-scope, we already have that on the scope. So there's a rubber tooth guard here already. And the other thing that you'll notice is that when we look at the two devices together, is that there's a difference in profile. This is really high, whereas this is much shorter. And so you don't have this extra part here to whack against the teeth. And plus there's no sharp edges, it's rounded. And having plastic rubber uh, against teeth is less likely to damage the teeth as opposed to a sharp right angle metal object against them. So let's talk about how we save the teeth with say the V-scope. Everything with this device is intentional. So we always examine the teeth before placing the V-scope in there. And then you should think about, well, if there's like damage on one side or very poor dentition, why can't you go to the other side, which is something that the V-scope allows you to do. So say this mannequin has like very poor teeth on the right, I am going to go to the left and then examine, I'm looking down throughout the whole time, I'm going to get underneath the epiglottis, we use that 10 mnemonic, you know, tongue epiglottis notch, standing for interarytmoid notch, and I get a beautiful view. And so I'm on the left. But what about a patient that has a really prominent teeth, like butt teeth, and um, you know you're just not going to get a view with this thing. So why don't you miss the teeth completely and go paraglossal? So I'll go on the left side again, and I'm going to look down, and look down as I advance, and I'm going to see the epiglottis, and I'm going to come past, and I see the interretinoid notch, so tongue epiglottis notch, and I'm going to miss the teeth completely, and I am on the side, and if I push it a little bit further, I can be right on the vocal cords. So I'm right on the side here. So 
the teeth are here, this device is sitting on the side of it. And this can be either on the left or on the right, it doesn't matter. You just need to do what you need to do to gain access to the airway after you sort of realize what sort of state the teeth are in. So that's one of the benefits of using the uh, V-scope. The other thing is the intentional pressure. I would contend that if you were to sort of place the V-scope in and put it underneath the epiglottis and have that rubber on the, on the teeth or even the plastic, and just gently lift up, this is intentional pressure. And you don't have to use very much pressure against the teeth here, which is always looks worse on a mannequin because the mannequins are so stiff compared to uh, patients, especially when they're paralyzed. But these mannequins have been designed for laryngoscopes that push away and up as opposed to our device. So that's why when you see our videos, all of our mannequins usually have the tongue grossly inflated, they have a neck collar. We do whatever we can to try to make them as difficult as possible. So patients, um, so, so when people come over, they have a lot of difficulty using a normal laryngoscope, whereas with our devices, like the so forth. So there we go. Intentional plastic rubber against teeth versus high profile metal laryngoscope with a sharp angle. We think that whoever designed this intentionally designed it to break teeth.